it's very hard to uh, define how you become to be an owner, how you become to be knowledgeable enough uh, to lead people, finding solution, and create business better than anybody else. It's almost like pretending to define the difference between being a parent and being a kid. When you're a parent, you have a set of skills and problem-solving ability and a set of knowledge that you don't get to have when you're a kid. Same things apply in the business world. Uh, there is entry-level position, there is a higher-level position. But being an owner, it's about attitude, it's about mentality. You, know, you can be an entry-level career as far as being new to a job or a first-timer, and have an owner attitude that will make you smash your job description, you know, and, and be really good at what you're doing and eventually advance in your career. Well, the business is expanding and we are trying to expand with the business. Yeah. Now, the problem is that business is expanding fast, carefully fast, you yeah. don't want to spend too fast. But the traveling, you know, you can't avoid that. You know, I just landed from Miami two hours after class, heading on back to Chicago. I stopped for that. And you know, you gotta, you gotta take it while it's hot. Well, it's happening. Absolutely. It's happening. Yeah, it no, definitely. We're gonna have the next few hours to go over and break down really what defines the difference, the, the differentiator between being an owner, having an owner mentality, and act like an employee that just show up, that he's bare minimum and walks away. But I think the attitude, charisma, and the way you tackle the problem is the defining edges. That's what define the man from the boys. Everybody can accomplish a task. Not many can do that under pressure, with people yelling at them, with a thousand things to multitask, and in a time crunch. So the reality is that it's really your ability to stand out that will make and define the difference between the two roles. You know, an owner is gotta be able to do anything that an employee does. Dude, chopping vegetables, greeting customers and paying bills, it's a task. It doesn't require a genius for it. When the employee has the aptitude towards that the owner has, that's when heaven's door open and you can really have your career skyrocket. And at that point, the sky's the limit. Because this is America, you can be better than anyone you want, as long as you want it. You're doing a fantastic job. Yeah. I mean, if the show didn't work out for you, mm -hmm. you have a, you have a... Chopping gotta... mushrooms would be my job. <laughs> if you love what you do, you'll never work a day in your life. What a crock of shit. It is, it's a crock of shit. I love what I do. I wouldn't do anything different. If I could add another 20 hours every day, I probably would, so I can work more. But I'm tired. It's hard. I work 130 hours a week. And if you don't believe me, just send an email to my assistant, see what she says. My assistant has two assistants. Well, that works. But the reality is that I'm passionate about it. The, the people that judge me the most, not in a positive way, are people that work 30 hours a week. They're always tired. They never had to relocate to a new country. They speak one language. And they make fun of me because I have an accent or whatever. Whatever, dude. I work 130 hours a week. How many hours did you work this week? 36? Oh, that's fantastic, because I work that between Monday morning and Wednesday lunchtime. You want to be the kind of guy that in business, the people above you, they're coming to you and saying, and why you're doing this? You should be doing so much more, man. One of the, my biggest satisfaction is when I see wasted talent in my business when a dishwasher is so good that it shouldn't be kept there, when a janitorial is so amazing that it should be in customer service, when a customer service is so amazing that it should be higher above, when a line cook is so amazing that it should be leading people instead of leading tickets. You know, I can teach you skills. I cannot teach you attitude. I can tell you what time to come to work. I can get you out of bed. 
you know, you really can't lead the horse to water, you can't force him to drink. So before you learn any skill, before you acquire the expertise to be able to be labeled as a leader, as an owner, before you even think about to go in business on your own or leading a group of people, you got to have that mentality. And then look, here's what you're gonna do. Yeah. Big clams, they're gonna wake up to a bad news. What? <laughs> they're going from ocean water to a hot pan. Okay. One thing that I'm excited about this seminar and one thing that I'm excited about sharing with you in the next few hours is that there is common denominator on what an owner does and how he acts and what kind of skill set he has. And there is common denominator that will make you recognize right away if you have an ownership mentality or an employee mentality. That's a reality. It's like when somebody say, thank you, you gotta say you're welcome. That's the, the basic of relationship in the workplace. There are flags. There are things that are said and done that will put you either in one category or the other one. And I'm very excited to explore and share those with you. And there is no bullshit. It's a science, it really is. It comes down to few steps, few situations, and few skills that are the differentiator between a owner and an employee, as far as a mentality standpoint. I'm gonna catch you out there, you're six, six times a year? Six, eight. Six, six eight, 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 Mentality, guys, and attitude is not about how good you had it in the past. It's not about culture. It's not about race, color of your skin. It's not about degrees that you have in school. It's not about education nor money. Attitude and passion is not about how good you had it so far. It's just about how bad you wanted to improve it. And that's all that matters at the end.